Welcome to Christ Online. Today we're going to talk about gifts, Christmas gifts. What do you want for Christmas? We're going to ask that question of King Solomon and find out, find out what he wants is nothing that he can take, but only what he can give away. Do it again. That was, that was great. The intensity of all those bell ringers and such. Wow, isn't that great? All those people coming in a little late, they're going to miss this great production. Welcome to worship here on this third Sunday of Advent as we travel together with awe and wonder towards that, um, that Christmas Eve, Christmas Day event. A couple of things going on this week. Um, today, the last of Sunday school until it resumes the first part of next year, January. And then uh, this coming Wednesday will be the last Wednesdays together until the new year. And then we have, of course, in nine days, we have Christmas Eve, all here in this space, the sanctuary. 
of your contemporary worshipers, three and eight. Three and eight will be the contemporary. If you want traditional for uh, Christmas Eve, that's six and ten. We still have need for poinsettias, so if you um, haven't bought one yet, want to beautify the, the sanctuary, please do that today or call the church office tomorrow morning. We have to put the order in for that. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Let's stand up and praise God. Here, the Lord is here. Peace on earth. 
light three candles. And in our hearts, we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. story written on our hearts the love of a savior came king of glory tore the veil apart the lamb for sinners slain Oh, Red 
journey of this life is done and time is a memory hear the anthem our resounding song who oh, praise to the king come before you here to praise and worship that name above all other names. Turn our minds and hearts to your word, O Lord. Speak to us today that we may speak to a world that desperately needs to hear about the Prince of Peace and the grace that comes to the one in whose name we gather, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. And those who would like to go out, the children, we've got Miss Kate over here for the children's message. And um, just very um, aware on this choral festival musical Sunday here of all the different people it takes to have worship, from the musicians here and the different ensembles to the camera people and the ushers and greeters. But we also have another group that you probably don't even know about, We've got prayer sentries. We've got a group of people that are in the corner during worship the entire time. They're praying for you, praying that the Spirit may open up your hearts, that you may receive what is taught and heard and sung gladly and, um, and be changed by it. So if you're interested in being part of the prayer sentry team, please give me a call, and we can put you on that rotation. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what do you want for Christmas? That is the question we've been asking for a while. Somebody said something? (laughs) And I remember as a kid being asked that question and and going, going to the Sears and Roebuck catalog. I know, some people are saying, what's Sears? (laughs) But circling all of these amazing toys that was going to turn my life into something exciting with these gifts. What do you want for Christmas? I suppose there are still catalogs, but perhaps many go to Amazon where anything Apple and anything Legos will fill up the cart very quickly. What do you want for Christmas? That was the question asked of King Solomon. Not about Christmas per se, but what do you want? God asks this newly crowned king what he wants of all things. And this is the Lord God of the universe. Well, let me back up for a second. David was was dying, his father. And all of the sons of David were jockeying for position to get to the throne until David finally cuts it all off 
and he names his successor. It's going to be 20-year-old Solomon, born of Bathsheba. And before David dies, he takes Solomon aside and says these final words to his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, so be strong, be a man. Observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him. Keep his decrees and commandments, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. David tells his son to be a man. And what does that mean? I suppose it's time to grow up. I suppose it's time to put aside childish ideas and passions and whims. It's time to be a man. Take responsibility. You're going to be ruler of the people of Israel. This is not about what you want. It's about what they need. It's not about your goals. It's God's goals. It's now time to step up. It's now time to be a man. And with that, this 20-year-old then goes to the throne and becomes ruler of Israel. Shortly after that, God appears to Solomon in a dream and says this, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. There it is. There's the question. What do you want? And it's coming from the Lord God of the universe that can give Solomon everything and anything he would ever want. Here is God giving Solomon a signed blank check and says, you, Solomon, just fill in the amount. Whatever you want. What would you do with that? What would you do with that? Let's see what Solomon does. Solomon says, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Solomon begins with humility and And with gratitude, you have blessed us beyond measure. You have given to David, and now you have given to me. Now, if I didn't know Solomon a little bit better, I would have thought that he's kind of buttering up God just a little bit. You know, before he goes in for the ask, you know, you are so great. I don't deserve this. Thank you so much. I would like... But what does he ask? What does Solomon ask for? Let's take a look. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child. Stop there. He's 20 years old. He's lived in the palace. He's on the throne. And yet, in this intimate moment before God, he is kind of revealing his greatest fears. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a kid. I'm only a child. I don't know how to carry out my duties. Your servant here, among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So here's the ask. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Pretty mature for a 20-year-old who likes being king. Give me wisdom. It could be suddenly Solomon is feeling the weight of the crown and the responsibility. It could be that he understands these are huge shoes he has to fill of the most beloved king, David. Or maybe his father's last words are still whispering in his ear, be a man. Be a man. 
Are you surprised he asks for wisdom? And he could have had the world. God is. Just a little bit, it seems God is. God says this, Since you have asked for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourselves, you have not asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice. I will do what you have asked. And God grants Solomon wisdom. From that point on, the name Solomon will always be attributed to wisdom. Even our friends that are illiterate with the Bible, they will understand when we say, that person has the wisdom of Solomon. They'll understand that. Solomon then goes on to write a couple of books of the Bible, notably Proverbs, which is filled with little quips of wisdom. And then there's that great story that demonstrates him discerning right and wrong. When, when two women come into his court, both claiming to be the mother of a particular child, and evidently the lower courts couldn't figure out the answer. We don't know. It goes to the highest court of the land. It comes before Solomon himself. And Solomon quickly comes to a solution. He says, well... It's easy. We just cut the baby in half and give each woman a portion. And one woman says, that sounds fair. And the other one says, no, (laughs) she's the mother. Give the baby to her. And quickly it's revealed who the true mother is. Wisdom. It's more than just knowledge. We all know a lot of smart people, don't we? We know a lot of people that know stuff. But wisdom, a wise person, is truly a rare gift. When I was going through my doctoral program, I was right around 30 years old, and in my cohort, there was an older guy, maybe 61, 62, an Episcopal priest. His name was Ben. And we're going to be together now for the next four or five years. But at one break, somebody asked Ben, what are you doing here? (laughs) You're 62 years old. You're not going to get a bigger church. You're not going to get a better salary. You're not going to get a different position. By the time you graduate, you will be ready to retire. What are you doing here, Ben? And Ben simply said, I want to be a wise man. And that's enough. Wisdom. More than just knowledge. It is discerning the will of God. It it echoes what Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel. He said, Seek first the kingdom of God, and what? And his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's really what Solomon was given, a guide to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's wisdom. But do you know how that phrase ends that Jesus said? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That is, Jesus was saying, don't worry about clothing, don't worry about what you're going to eat or wear. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God will throw in all the rest, the peace, the hope, the joy, the love. If you seek wisdom, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He'll throw it all in, just like he did for Solomon. After, after God said, I'm going to give you wisdom. And by the way, that's, that's a great answer, Solomon. After he does that, he says this. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. I'm going to give you wealth and honor, riches, children, wives, peace, a kingdom, victory, 
so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. What do you want for Christmas? <laughs> Solomon asked for the right thing. And when you ask for the right thing, you get so much more. Now let me ask you, what is the right thing that you want for Christmas? It seems to me it has to be a gift that you receive in order to give away. Right? A gift that you receive in order to give away. So Solomon asked for wisdom, not just for himself, but to give it away for the kingdom of Israel. And one who seeks first the kingdom of God and its righteousness doesn't do it just for him or herself, but to give it away for others. What other gift is like that, that you can receive to give away? Mary had such a gift. It came as a surprise, which is an understatement. <laughs> it came as a huge surprise when the angel Gabriel came to Mary. And, and when she then went to see Elizabeth, her older cousin who was great with child, pregnant with John the Baptist, the baby leapt in her womb with Mary filled with so, jo so much joy and gratitude for this gift growing within her, she launched into song and she said, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy, holy is his name. Mary is filled with gratitude and joy, awe and wonder. But she also knows that this is a gift that she will receive in order to give away. Give away to the disciples who will betray him and deny him. Give away to the Jewish leaders who will falsely accuse him and beat him. Give away to Pontius Pilate that will convict him and kill him and give away to death that will consume him and engulf him. It is indeed a gift that she has received to give away to a world that needs it so badly. What kind of gift can you receive to give away? I think about our alternative gift market that we do around Thanksgiving for 25 years. These are all gifts that we receive, but we can't keep. We're giving it all away. Or sometimes you hear kids having a birthday party. They say, don't bring any gifts, just bring some canned goods so that we can fill up the, fill up the food pantry. Or those who are, who are gifted with long, thick hair that grow it out only to cut it off and give the locks of love for cancer people that they don't have anymore. What great gifts. What great gifts that we receive in order to give away. Any others? This past week, somebody sent me a video. Um, exactly on this theme about a gift that we receive to give away. Take a look. This year for Christmas, what are you hoping to get? A computer. Big, giant Barbie house. A trophy case. The Xbox 360. Minecraft Legos. What do you think your mom or dad want for Christmas? My mom would probably want a ring. She's never really had a ring. Jewelry. She loves jewelry. A new TV. My watches. So, you actually did buy an Xbox 360. What in the world? What is this? A 
Okay, you you really got this for me? A new lap house. Wow, and it's a necklace. So we also bought a necklace because he said you also wanted to get a necklace for your mom or your auntie. The catch is that you can either get a gift for yourself huh? or you can pick a gift for your mom and dad. I need you to pick one. Now, now before you answer, oh, I bet that's hard. Is that a really hard question? Mm-hmm. What gift do you pick? I choose this. I gotta go with the ring. What gift do you pick? That one. That one. That dress. I'll choose this for my mom. I'll choose this one. It's a really tough question. I'll but give him this. You already know? Tell me why. Because Legos don't matter. Lego, your family matters. Not Legos, not toys, your family. So it's either family or Legos, and I choose family. I get gifts every year from my family, and my mom don't get anything. If I get a laptop, my mom will get something. She helps me when I'm sick. She helps me with my homework. She gave me a house to live in. They look out for me and do stuff for me, so I need to give back to them. Now I, I have the opportunity to give them something. Because you actually picked the gift for your family, you're actually going to go home with both. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm feeling really happy and Why? thankful. Just happy. Thankful. For your family? For what? My family, everything. You did make his decision, actually. And oh he goodness. picked the Pandora charm. Oh, that is sweet. You're going to make me cry. So what are you putting in the thing? In the room. Oh, it's for me? Oh, it's for you. Thanks, guys. I was trying to. So what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> when Solomon was asked that question, what do you want? He asks for a gift that he can receive only to give away. And when those who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it's only a gift you receive to, to give away. And these Atlanta kids, it's only a gift that you can receive to give away. So what do you want for Christmas? I hope with your list and circling, particularly as you work with your kids, you can help them look beyond the toys and the stuff and ask that question, what can you give to give away? And, and, it, and it's not the point... It's, in fact, it ruins everything if, if this is your intention. But we see time and again that when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Now, again, we don't do it for selfishness. Um, Solomon didn't ask for wisdom so we could get all this other stuff is added unto you. When you ask for the right thing, you get so much more. Love, when you ask for peace, when you ask for forgiveness, and family, and hope, and joy, all these things will be added unto you. Now, tell me, what do you want for Christmas? Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us continue with our offering. The one true King has come, the Father's only Son came down for all of us to conquer the world with love. The promise turned to flesh, the prophet's words descend, our Savior has come.
Lord, you're the giver of all joy and of gladness. Lord, we come before you today with praise in our hearts. Lord, giving thanks for the presence of your son, Jesus. That we have found in him the one that our heart longs for, who's the greatest blessing the world has ever been given, O oh God. Like Solomon, we ask that you'd inspire us to seek, Lord, to seek the gift of wisdom from on high, the wisdom of Christ himself knowing that you give all of the things besides that we need for abundant life. Lord, teach us, train us, order us to seek that gift of wisdom, O oh Lord. The giver of David's throne and covenant with voices and instruments, your people glorify you, raising us into expressions of joy, O oh Lord, this day. Thank you for the gifts of song and dance, for loud shouts and for quiet melodies. Lord, use our gifts of music to magnify your name and to draw us closer to your Son. Lord, you're the giver of perfect peace. We ask you on this day that you would pour out your gift of shalom, your, your all-encompassing peace of all things, Lord, into a world that so often is filled with fear and anxiety, anxiety that can creep into our own hearts. Lord, for those facing today serious medical challenges, for all those who need healing, Lord, cover them with your light and your love. Lord, we remember before you uh, those in our community who need that gift of healing. We pray for Will, for John's daughter Marie, for Don. Lord, we lift up Nate and Dana, Shelly, Emily, Dottie. Lord, we pray at the same time that you would comfort those whose hearts are heavy with sadness and grief, especially the McClintock community as they continue to grieve the loss of one of their own in a tragic accident, O oh Lord. And we pray for the Koppel family on the death of a grandmother. Lord, hear the names of others. We lift you a louder in silence who need, need prayer. Gracious God, you're the giver of life. Lord, we pray for those who, as the year comes to a close and a new year is about to begin or going through transitions, for parents expecting a child, Lord, for college students who are finishing up their exams and maybe graduating, for those entering retirement or a new job, Lord, grant them a special wisdom to follow you in these changes of their life. Finally, God, reset our joy. Help us to not become tired or weary of showing kindness, compassion, mercy, to receive those gifts to be given away, O oh God. But help us to wait patiently for you, rejoicing in your name, hoping and knowing that you work all things, O oh God, for good. And now, Lord, all these things we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Online. So as you make your Christmas list of what you want this season, remember to put down that thing that you can only receive to give away for the sake of others. We're glad you joined us here on Worship for Christ Online. Yeah. 